Yes, and welcome back to X Plane 11, everybody. And today we're going to look to see if we can make a few virtual dollars. We're here in the FS economy, um, and we've loaded up the plane with three passengers looking to make about $2,400 gross. But anyway, we're going to fly the C172 from Invermere right across to Nelson. This is in Canada, so that's CAA8 to CZNL. It's about 80 nautical miles, and uh, everything's just about ready to go. I'm sitting here on the active runway, ready to take off. But before I do that, I'll do a quick bit of flight planning. Uh, I'll check this out. Let's see if I can get this transition right. Uh, if we jump into here and we push this thing right here. Okay, here we go, guys. What we've got here is a little program called Little Nav Map. Uh, it's a freeware program. And it is absolutely sensational. Those from FXX, if you think of Plan G, this is very similar to that. Except this can be used for all types of uh, flight plans, including uh, jets, uh, IFR, VFR, everything. So anyway, so I've actually loaded in um, the GPS coordinates into our GPS. Uh, but what I need to do is, uh, all you'd need to do is go over to the airport in which you're starting. You can see my yellow aircraft right here. Right click on that. Set as Invermere as our flight plan departure. Boom! Then go across to our, um, our destination, Charlie Zulu November Lima, which is Nelson, and set that as our flight plan destination. And boom! There we go, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Easy as that. So, a couple of cool little features with this is it gives you a lot of uh, information in the panels here around uh, the uh, airport that you're going to. Uh, including the runways, um, comm frequencies, procedures if there are any, the weather that's likely to be expected. Um, but the cool little feature I like here is the uh, terrain map, which shows elevation of the terrain that you need to fly over. And uh, I find this really, really handy, particularly flying in Canada where there's a lot of steep mountains and it's uh, easy to get yourself in a bit of trouble. So as you can see here, um, it's, you know, it's recommending that I get 10,000 feet as the minimum uh, level or sorry minimum altitude I should say but I'm going to go 10,500 feet uh, just to make sure I'm nice and clear of those now as we move out of here and let me just get back to our main screen right here hopefully that's come back at least get back in the cockpit as we go out of here it's uh, I have got the GPS set as I said but I'm unlikely to be able to just go direct GPS once we're in the air and let it fly directly to our destination because there's probably some big hills in our road as you can see we're in a bit of a valley right here through I oh know I'm now pointing at the nav map which you can't see but anyway if you look straight ahead that's a big valley so we'll look to climb out of there and then we'll, we'll work it from there okay everything's set we've got all our lights set correctly so what we'll do is we'll give this a bit of juice and we'll see if we can uh, get a successful... Oh, no, actually, wait, 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 everybody, wait. Lucky I remembered this. In Flight Sim Economy, always remember, always remember to turn on and start your flight. And here we go, start flight. And here we go right here, three tourists, Ard Air. That's the name of the group, by the way, that I have in FS Economy. Feel free if you do... Uh, partake in FS Economy to come and join the group. It's just a very small group. We've got an FBO located here in Invermere. We've rented a whole lot of passenger terminals all around the place. Um, a quite a few in Canada, plus some in New Zealand. So um, come and jump in and, and, and uh, give it a whirl. We've got three aircraft at this point, so it's not massive, but it's uh, decent. So here we go, right here. Our flight started. We've got three, these three tourists uh, loaded into our aircraft. And we are ready to go now. They're about eight hundred dollars each, so twenty-four hundred dollars gross. And what we need to do is we just get rid of that. All right, guys. Now we're ready to go. Let's take the parking brake off. That torque starting to take hold. We'll try to keep it nice and straight. And as you can see, this particular runway has—it's got a curve in it, which I really love. Really awesome feature. I'm still trying to learn quite a bit about this uh, about this particular simulator. I'm still a bit of a noob with it. Although, as time goes by, I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. Okay, getting approaching 60 knots. Just rotating here. Whoa. Oh, I love that sunlight reflecting off the panel there. And I'm going to look to trim uh, for about 80 knots if I can. Although, I've got a pretty heavy aircraft hit. So if we can, uh, let's just say, let's just trim for 70 for a start, actually. We'll be fine. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to let uh, the uh, autopilot do the heavy lifting for a start. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Come on, get it, sort of. There we go. And let's just set it to 600 feet per minute. As you can see, the speed has come up to 80 knots. It will probably just pull back slightly there at 600 feet per minute. It's not really the best way to do it. I should really hand fly this thing, but I just can't be bothered. So what we're going to do now that we are underway and we've got positive rate of climb and uh, we're a decent uh, altitude above the ground, well, let's look to engage our nav. And I've got it, the, I've got it set up here to GPS, so we'll follow our GPS coordinates. So we're going to do a big turn here uh, and bring ourselves onto our heading. Let's jump outside the aircraft. This is why I wanted to do autopilot, so we could jump outside the aircraft here. Look at that. I love the lighting on this thing. It is fantastic. And as we come around, it's looking very, very cool. Let me just, I'll just bring up the um, little nav. Uh, thing here for you guys so you can check it out so there you go as you can see we're turning around uh, onto our track here goes our track the pink line and uh, we'll just uh, make our way onto that through the uh, GPS and away we'll go we're altitude of 3,900 feet at the moment I wonder whether where it shows our altitude above ground level hmm that's something to uh, think about try to figure out anyway let's get back into the action we are climbing away. Look at that beautiful reflections there. Taking a look at this, I actually think I'm going to be completely fine to go direct, actually. Those uh, mountains don't look too scary at this point. But we'll get up to 10,500 feet. Lake Invermere right there, I believe. I assume that's what it is. Oh, Windermere Lake, in fact, not Invermere. To my map here. This map is very cool, this moving map. A fantastic freeware program. I'm actually going to donate to them. It's that good. Now, one thing I do need to do for X Plane though is I need to get a subscription to Navigraph and update all the NDB, the, the, um, the uh, intersections, all that sort of stuff because this is a little bit out of date. Let's jump back in the cockpit here, guys, and we are down to 60. That's not where we want to be. Let's bring this down to 400 feet. Really, usually what I would be doing if I was flying an aircraft like this is um, I'd just be flying by sight and feel. Um, I wouldn't, you know, obviously I'll be keeping an eye on the instruments. Uh, but at, f at 60 knots is actually uh, pretty average, to be fair. So let's look to get that under control, get a bit of speed. And really you do, you know, you just, you trim to the speed and then whatever vertical speed you get out of, out of that, you just go with that. I wouldn't necessarily be uh, setting a vertical speed. I certainly wouldn't be using an autopilot if I was flying this, at this point anyway. So we're going to go up to 10,500 feet. One thing I have noticed, obviously, is that the aircraft is quite heavy. We've got a full load of fuel, basically, or 75% of fuel. And we've also got um, three passengers on board who have jumped out somewhere along the way. I actually quite like this cockpit. It's pretty well modelled. Uh, obviously the uh, passengers are hiding at the moment. Maybe they've gone to the lavatory, which we don't have. Here we go, we're back up to 80. Let me just bang that up to 4 if we can, or else it's going to take all day to get to our altitude. That's all good. Uh, we're, we're set here uh, on 1200 on our transponder. Let me just get in here and fix this, because let's turn that on. That's for VFR. One thing we should be on too is with our comm frequency, we should really be on 122.8. So let's get in there. This is some stuff that I should have really organized before. I... 122.8. Oh, I was on it. Ah, oh, sorry, I thought that was a zero. I was on it. Well done. Given that it's an unmanned uh, airport aerodrome, means we can communicate with other, oh, I got rid of the yoke there. It means I can communicate with other aircraft on the uh, in the area. Actually, just looking at this now, I think I might struggle to get over these hills, but we'll, we'll, we'll uh, take a look as we get closer, and we might have to just take evasive action over to the uh, port side there, although there's a bit of a valley I could probably fly up, but I could potentially get in a bit of trouble doing that. 
I think actually looking at it, one way to tell is if you are looking at the mountain, if it's going down the screen, you know you're um, high enough to, you, you're probably going to get over it. But if you look at this closer, you can see it's actually getting bigger and higher, which means I'm not going to make it over. So what we're going to do is we're going to disengage, the, we're going to set our heading over to the uh, left hand side a bit here and we're going to hit our heading button right there and let's just look to avoid those mountains seems like a good strategy to me in fact we'll fly down this valley we'll fly right to the edge here we'll be a little bit conservative we're actually flying due south now we're on a heading of well not quite south but uh, 160 by the looks of it there or thereabouts and as you can see, we would have really had some trouble if we continued on that path right there. Those mountains were getting very, very close. Anyway, so let's just get outside the aircraft and have a look around. Yeah, very... A little bit too close for comfort, that's for sure. Looks like wooden aircraft, large aircraft over there in the distance. Let me get back and check out our speed here. Okay, we're getting some nice speed now. So let's just ramp that up a bit more. Maybe to 500 feet per minute. Seems to be about right, depending on atmospheric conditions and all that sort of stuff. Uh, 500 feet per minute seems to work pretty well for the uh, good old Cessna 172. Here we go. I should really use my little thing here on my uh, post on my joystick just to make it uh, a little bit smoother. Anyway, I think we're looking okay here to get over this hill potentially. Maybe it's just, that really is probably a little bit too close for comfort to be fair. So we'll just work this around to the left here. And we'll just make sure we avoid this uh, mountain completely. Looking for a clearance of 500 feet above ground level. I believe that is the legal requirement from memory. It's been a long time since I did my PPL. That's probably breaking a whole few rules right there. How can I tell what my above ground level altitude is hmm anyway who cares usually you obviously be able to pop your head up and uh, have a look of when you've got the clearance to be able to move back onto your track but at this point here I'm just gonna use the outside views and there we go we're climbing up now this is the fun of flying in uh, around the Canada mountains you can't go directly on track so Make sure you pay attention to that. I'll just start moving it back around to the right hand side now because we're quite a way off. We're actually perpendicular to our track at the moment. But that's all part of it. Anyway guys, I, I hope you do enjoy these types of videos. It's something a bit different from my channel having flight sim. It's something I've been doing for a long time and now uh, I, I really enjoy flying. So hopefully you do enjoy these videos. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend getting into FS economy. It's for general aviation and you earn money through flying passengers and cargo all around the place and you can buy aircraft, you can buy FBOs, you can lease out things, it's a nice uh, community going on there uh, and it's just a bit of fun, that's all gives a little bit of purpose to what you're up to um, I went ahead and reinstalled my FSX by the way uh, after it crashing I got a new SSD with plenty of room so uh, I installed it because I do have a lot of add-ons for it that I do enjoy uh, using and as I build up uh, X-Plane to match it then I'll probably be using FSX less and less but at this point here it's uh, we'll keep it going oh nice what are you up to we're almost good to get right back on our tracks let's have a look at this um, yeah, I'd say we probably can just, let's get back onto our nav track here and see how we go. We've got a bit of cloud here. Once again, probably breaking a few rules here. Although, given the information I have here, I can essentially fly IFR if I have to. One thing I probably need to do is just lean things out a little bit. engaged 400 feet per minute at the moment and we are approaching nine and a, oh no seven and a half thousand meters and we're about to go into IFR conditions 
which is a little bit tricky here. Not ideal at all. But I think we should be fine. Plenty of clearance coming up through here. We should break through this cloud layer after a uh, short while anyway. But once again, you'd uh, make sure you're flying by your instruments. You just need to make sure that you've got clearance through all the terrain. And you've got things under control. Definitely a bit, bit disorientating, to spit it out, Mace, when you do fly IFR using the instruments. All sorts of things happen to your mind. You think you're turning and you're not. Those sorts of things. Anyway, that cloud's cool. I like how that's sort of uh, working its way around the aircraft as we if we get through the cloud. Looks pretty realistic. I like it. Okay, we're now just about to... Just looking at the map, and we're about to hit our uh, direct line to our destination. So we'll be making a left-hand turn pretty soon. Look at that. That really glimmer does your head in a bit, doesn't it? All that cloud all over the place. It feels like I'm turning left. I'm obviously not. I'm directly level, and you can see that with your uh, artificial horizon. 8,000 feet we've just passed, so we're starting to get up towards the altitude that we're looking for. You can actually see on my GPS right here, that's the uh, track that I'm aiming for, so we're just heading towards it, then we'll make a left-hand turn as we hit it. This is all very exciting in the cloud, isn't it? Starting to get to the top of the cloud layer there, and there we go. Plenty of clearance above all the hills. Beautiful. Oh, that looks sharp. I love it. And this is just the fault terrain. I'm really impressed with the default terrain. You can see the it's sort of photorealistic in a way. It's got some of the um, you can see the shadows of the trees and that sort of thing. And I actually like the detail you get in at this at this range here on the on the hills and the rocks right here. That usually would pop in and out on FSX. But anyway, we're starting to get up there, right over the top of these hills. Screenshot here. Hold on, what is it? Shift uh, 15, is it? No, F12. No, just F12. There we go. Alright. We're almost getting up to the uh, top of our climb. So at the moment, if we check out our GPS, we've got a distance of 67 nautical miles, 67 and a half nautical miles to go. Which is going to take at the current speed, which is only uh, 75 knots, is 47, 47 minutes. Now, obviously, once we hit our cruise, uh, we're going to that that speed will increase quite significantly, probably up around the 130 mark there or thereabouts, maybe a bit less actually, maybe quite a bit less actually, more around the 100, just over the 100 mark. But that will shorten the time to our destination quite significantly. So what we'll do is we'll get ourselves up to the up to cruise altitude, ten and a half thousand feet, and then what I might do is continue to fly the plane, and we'll do a bit of a cut scene, and we'll uh, we'll pick up the plane as we come in for our descent and uh, approach into into Nelson. While we're just let's just make sure that our speed is okay. It's fine at this point. What are we, 9,000 feet? I'm just going to increase that, uh, decrease that a little bit to 300 feet per minute. It's a bit sluggish to be fair. I'm definitely heavy. Let's just quickly grab our map. Ah, uh, let's see. Boom. Alright, so, let's start thinking about how we're going to, what runway we're going to try to land on. And you can see the runway orientation right there. If you look closely, you can see right there. Looks like there's a bit of a gorge to fly through, so that might give us a nice approach. I don't think I've actually flown into this airport before, but let's have a look. Invermere, if we look at the runways, you've got runway 15 and 33. So obviously 30, oh, 15 and 33. Okay, that can't be the orientation of the runway then. 33? That way? No. No. Okay. I don't think I have... Oh, yes. I don't know. 22 and 4. Oh. Ha! Okay. I'm looking at Invermere there. So how about we get Nelson. There we go. Okay, 
runways 22 and 4 are the two options. So let's just take a look at the weather. Uh, the nearest weather is telling us that it's 110 degrees, 5 knots at 110 degrees. With that in mind, um, we are probably going to have to come round. Although it's 5 knots, really you should land into the wind. So we're probably going to have to join the circuit and uh, maybe fly down over here, turn around and come up into runway 04. Um, even at 04, yeah, it's going to be a, a very much a crosswind coming in there. But that's fine, we can look at do, doing that. Top of descent here is 25 nautical miles out. It calculates that for you. Uh, but yeah, great little program. Let's get back into the actual game. Hopefully it all comes out all right when I flick between the programs. Anyway. Let's get back in. Anyway guys, I think uh, that is enough in the meantime for the climb. Just about at cruise altitude. So what I'll do is I will fly most of the flight and pick, pick, uh, we'll pick you guys back up when we're closer to coming in for our landing. So we will catch you on the other side of this. Hi everybody, I'm just back up here in the cruise and I just thought I'd uh, bring up a couple of things I've uh, found just by looking around while I've been flying. And uh, one thing is, is you actually read this left to right. What an idiot I was. Of course this is top of descent, ready to descend down into our destination. So here I was thinking it was right to left for some reason. Anyway, you can see our track, we just got over the top of that first hill and uh, we're nicely up in our cruise now and it's showing a time to destination of, if we go along here, uh, 35, 35 minutes by the looks of it. Oh, hold on, no, that is the total flight time. Um, it must be, a, it'll be around here somewhere. Uh, anyway, um, one thing I was trying to find out was how um, was how do we find out above ground level uh, how high above ground level and there we go right there you hover over it ground elevation five seven or four six one seven above ground altitude five nine nine four so we're well above okay and welcome back everybody and there's been a slight change of plan uh, the winds are actually calm here we go here uh, winds calm here at Nelson so we can go straight into runway two two I've got to do a bit of work here let's get rid of this autopilot let me speed off a bit of speed here. We're just a couple of nautical miles out. And we just need to work our way down the hill. The side of this hill and the lake. The approach was absolutely beautiful coming through this uh, valley right here. Oh, nice. Get it sorted. Right, so what we're looking to do here is just bleed off a bit of speed. Get ourselves into the range that we can start extending our flaps. And that's the white arc that you can see going just past 80. Well, to 90. So I'm just holding the aircraft up a bit here and as soon as we get into the white arc bang the first set of flap and then trim for trim for 70 is what I'm looking for we'll put another another um, level of flaps on and let's get our third on here we probably don't even need our third but let's do it and I'm trimming the aircraft forward for 70 knots there goes the uh, airport just over there we're going to fly over the residential houses we've got the lake on the right it's a beautiful approach right here into okay getting a bit low so let's put a bit of bit of power on looking nice nice approach here now we're a bit high-ish let's just keep uh, working that throttle the wind's been calm, certainly helps, gave me the options, and it just looks like it would have been a bit of a challenging approach coming from the other side there, but, oh, I am a little bit high here, let's cut the power completely here, guys, usually something you'd do over the threshold, as you can see, the windsock's definitely calm, let's aim for the, uh, the markers, looking to flare, flare, oh man, I smashed that into it, that was not smooth at all, whoa, we are going to need the engineers to check out the fuselage after that. Oh, that was an absolute shocker. Oh, my God. Now, usually I go down and um, and park up, but I'm going to park up here because it's just... It's one thing I've noticed with X-Plane, you've got to cut the engine. That's not the best place to cut the engine in the middle of the runway, everybody. But I want to get the X-Economy open. And we look to finish the flight, 
transmitting and that looks all good so if I uh, you were not going to be able to see what I'm doing but I'm just quickly going into the FS economy page just to see that that had happened and it definitely had and uh, we have three successful by the looks of it oh, hold on finish flight I did hmm for some reason it's not loving this Oh well folks, here we are, we're back and we, for some reason we can't submit our flight. I would imagine it's something that I've done. Uh, I've just checked the site, it's definitely up and running and I've uh, submitted flights in the past. So I would say, uh, maybe all my flicking in and out of the menus and uh, adjusting things as we went has done something which means this flight can't be logged. Um, I'll keep trying and um, yeah, hopefully I might be able to get it through. Um, sometimes the site is down for maintenance, but uh, I'm not too sure. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this particular flight, something a little bit different. Um, I also noticed that before, by the way, I uh, turned the engine off using the key rather than draining the mixture. Um, but rusty, as you can see. But hey, remember guys, smash that like button if you did enjoy this. Subscribe if you're new, and until next time, take it easy.